Welcome to God's Word for you today. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you how grateful we are for another time in your presence. Lord, we bless you today. We're grateful for life, health, and strength. And now, Lord, as we come together to open your Word, we pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts, that we might be able to receive the engrafted Word that is able to save our souls. We thank you tonight, and we're so grateful for bringing us to the last uh, Wednesday study of the year. Lord, you have been gracious to us, and uh, Lord, we pray that this new year will be a year of fulfillment and blessings for all of us. We thank you for all that you've taught us, and we thank you you for the help of your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, bless our time together tonight. Speak to every heart. This we ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. All right. We'll continue our studies from uh, lessons from divine encounter. That has been our uh, subject uh, for many, many months. And we have studied different Bible characters and uh, look in depth to their encounters uh, with Jesus, with God, and we have noted some important lessons from those encounters, uh, some lessons that are good for us and helpful to us as we also walk with God. Now we'll continue our study tonight, the rich young ruler, uh, the man who almost had it all. Again, I welcome you all in Jesus' wonderful name. We will read from Mark tonight. Uh, last week we read from Matthew, uh, uh, from uh, verse 19, Matthew 19, and uh, let's pick it up tonight and we will read from uh, Mark 10. And Mark 10 will begin from verse 17. And for those of you who have been uh, watching and staying in, uh, you know, with us as we are studying this subject, you will remember that, um, you know, we mentioned that the Gospel of Mark, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and also the Gospel of Luke had uh, all written this story. And it was good for us to uh, read all of the account to get a a, a whole uh, summation of this story. And that has been helpful. We've read from the Gospel of Matthew. We have read from the uh, Gospel of uh, Mark. We have made uh, and noted some things from the Gospel of Luke. Tonight we will go on and expand this uh, study and see the other things that we we learn. What, what it comes to really uh, tell us other than the story uh, itself that we're very familiar uh, with. Now, uh, uh, let's read again. Uh, if you have your Bible, we'll be reading from Mark uh, chapter 10 and verse uh, 17. We're going to read from verse 17. Now, as he was going uh, out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and ask him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one, no one is good, but one that is God. You know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother, and he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, 
loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come up, take up your cross, and follow me. But he was sad at his word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and, uh, and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle uh, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Amen. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or a br uh, uh, brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time um, houses and and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with, with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Amen. We'll stop uh, right here and then we'll go over this story again. I do pray by the help of God's Spirit that uh, we will be able to round this up tonight and for the year and uh, by uh, God's spirit we will start a new uh, a, a new topic or session uh, next Bible study which will be next year all right um, so we have indeed um, uh, made mention uh, of the setting of the story. Uh, again, tonight we started from verse 17, but if you remember, I had uh, you know, mentioned to you that what could have prompted this man's uh, question to Jesus uh, may have been because of what had been happening before now. Jesus had been talking and uh, had an engagement with the Pharisees and then after that uh, some people brought their children to Jesus and the disciples uh, interrupted and Jesus said something there about the kingdom of God such are the kingdom of God and it's likely that this rich young ruler had been listening to all that's going on and he came running and he came to ask Jesus this question well, I mean, uh, we know the, uh, the end of the story, which uh, uh, the end of the story is, uh, is very, very disappointing uh, because if you remember the way this man came with such uh, passion and zeal, uh, and then he ended up uh, going sorrowfully. And for the last few weeks, we have been trying to understand uh, th what could have happened. And we have seen that the problem uh, of this man was a, a deeper problem than what it's, uh, it's apparent. Now, my, my friend, uh, I have mentioned to you why he was, uh, why this man is referred to as the rich young ruler. That whole idea comes from reading all of the uh, synoptic gospel. Uh, we get that idea from all of those gospel together. 
because not one of them uh, tell us he was a rich young ruler. They just one tell us that he was rich, another tell us he was a ruler, another tell us that he was uh, rich and a ruler, another tell us uh, that he was young. So again, uh, we we uh, notice the uh, invitation that the Lord gave this man um, when uh, he said to the Lord, "Well, uh, I I just want to know what to do." We've talked about. Uh, you know, the whole idea and the sense of what religion actually is. This man was apparently uh, religious. Uh, he, he had a religion that he, uh, he was satisfied with until now that he met Jesus because he was, you know, uh, you know was confident enough to just say, oh, Jesus, I, I've done all of these. Because he's asking, what shall I do to inherit life? That was, that was not a question that, was, uh, that has a secret answer. God had already said in his word, if you, keep, if you keep my word, then you will have life. My words will give you life. So Jesus said, well, why are you asking me? What did God say? What is written in, in the commandment? And then he, you know, Jesus recited the other part of the commandments, which has to deal with uh, his relationship with others. And proudly, confidently, he said to the Lord, um, I have kept all of these things since I have been a youth. And what do I still lack? What's, what's left, in other words, is asking Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, then, uh, if you want to be perfect, that is, if you if you want to be perfect, you know what you what you had was good, but if you want to be perfect, one thing you lack, and and it, and if it's Jesus who says to you that one thing you lack, then you do lack one thing. What is the what is the power of that one thing? One thing could be that thing that makes the whole difference. You know, if you were boarding a plane and uh, and there was some delay and the pilot came on to say to you, well, we're, we're just thinking whether to go or not. Uh, we're ready to go, we can still fly, but there is one thing missing in the engine. You know, I don't know if you want to go on you know, one thing can be missing in anything and it can make all of the difference. And so we see in this case, Jesus said to this man, one thing is lacking. You, you lack one thing and this is it. And, and when you understand what he lacks, when you interpret and expantiate what he lacks, Jesus said, this one thing you lack, go away. And, and indeed, the response to these command show us that this man actually liked these things. See, you know, um, sometimes you stand before other men and you pride yourself and you blow your own trumpet and you talk about your achievement and talk about, you know, what you've done, where you've been, uh, all that you have. And, and men may, you know, envy you and, and really, really applaud you and, you know, but when you stand before God and, and, you know, what do you have to say, you know, do you pride yourself before God? Do you, do you, do you say, oh, all these things I, I have, all these things, you know, there is, there is a God who sees beyond what man can see, you know, you know. Pastors may think you're okay, you know, because they see you uh, every Sunday, you try to be diligent, you know, and we, we can write you off as, you know, a good, you know, Christian man, a good Christian woman. But then uh, if you stand before the Lord, he might be able to show you that one thing that you lack. And seriously, you know, this, this, this man was facing the challenge of his life. You know, the, the danger of, of, of religion is also the deceitfulness uh, of religion. 
because you know the religion give you uh, a, a list of things to do and people who try to be religious will check those boxes and check this book i do this i do this i go to church i pray you know uh three times a day six times a day i I give my tithes and offerings. I, I am on the, you know, uh, on the choir board or the deacon board. I do all of this. And then you check boxes. And the, the danger of that is the many boxes you check makes you feel, you know, satisfied about your yourself. See, uh, prior to this encounter, prior to this meeting with Jesus, this man, you know, feels felt satisfied about his lifestyle. He felt satisfied about who he was and how he had carried, you know, um, you know, carried his life. Now, uh, this is not all criticism. Uh, these, in, the, in this man, we find some uh, very, very positive things, very enviable things. He was young. I mean, you don't usually find that combination in young people. You don't, you know, not too many young people uh, are after, hereafter. Not too many people are, are you know, are, are after, you know, uh, religion. Not too many people are concerned about being, you know, being moral, holy, and then also, you know, uh, uh, you know, thinking about the, the life beyond. So we, we have to, you know, commend this, this young man. At least, you know, he came to Jesus just to ask about uh, this particular issue. Uh, he came to Jesus to ask about this issue. To, a lot of people came to Jesus because they wanted something. They came to Jesus be, be, be because uh, they were being hunted by, you know, uh, you know, some problems and, and 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 this and that. That's why they came. To, that's why they came to Jesus. Or they come to Jesus for security, for prosperity, for protection. Uh, not this man. So uh, we give him, you know, some uh, some applause because you know we 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 see, and so. We're gonna go on tonight to 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 do some analysis and and diagnosis uh, of things because see uh, the Lord deals on on deals with a man uh, with in his heart he doesn't see as a man sees he the man God sees the heart and so if we're going to learn anything. In this old encounter, it's got to be something that is that is much deeper. Uh, this young man had a religion that he was satisfied with. He had checked all the boxes, uh, had done this and done this, and he and that made him feel good about himself. He was not shy at all to reply in front of everybody. Lord, yeah, I have, I have done this. I, I have not committed adultery. I have not. You know, committed murder. I have not stolen. I have not borne false witness against my neighbor. I have not defrauded anyone. I honor my father and my mother. So, what is left? Uh, you know, the danger is that this man was telling Jesus he was already a good man. He was already good. What is left? And that is the deceitfulness of religion. So now. Yeah, he had followed the law, and and so you will be able to see now. Now, 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 we 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 we're seeing uh, some things. We are analyzing this and, and seeing the depth. The Holy Spirit opening our eyes to see the lesson for us. See, here is here is the danger. Here is the danger. So so now he is so uh, into the law which he was supposed to uh, most 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 people you know of his age may not have been as good as he was and as good as he was he is the danger the danger was that so he get locked up in following that law and so now when he's face to face with Jesus Jesus now say to him well you know 
if you want to be perfect. So let's take that word, if you want to be perfect. Uh, the message translation say, if you want to give it all that you've got. So that statement in itself from Jesus to him suggests that he was not perfect. So no matter what he has done, he is still not perfect. So Jesus said, okay, now, if you uh, want to be perfect, then go do this. Now, notice that what Jesus said to him to do can just be sum up in one thing, to go take care of those who are less fortunate. Are you, are you hearing me? And, and that is his relationship with others. And what Jesus quoted for him was the second part of the Decalogue, that is the second part of the Ten Commandments that has to do with relationship with others. So are you with me? So now the real test is, yeah, you may say you have done all of this. Now go and do these for others. Okay. In other words, one thing you lack, there are some people that have not yet been a blessing uh, through your being blessed. In other words, you know, God has given you this privilege, this position, this power, and there are others who have not been blessed. The aim, aim and the purpose of you being blessed is to be a blessing. God never blessed a man so that he could just be blessed. God bless you so that you could be a blessing, whatever it is that God has blessed you with. So now, again, we uh, look seriously into uh, what Jesus said to him. You know, let's listen to the voice of the Spirit and let's take away every pre-notions and every, every, every suspicions that we have because they block our ears and, and they put a veil on our eyes. And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the heart is like a soil. It doesn't matter if whether you have a good seed, a good seed if there is no good soil, it, it won't matter. The Word of God is good seed. And it must fall in good soil. The word that Jesus spoke to this man, uh, well, was good, but he couldn't hear it well because uh, he heard something else. So when Jesus said, okay, well, uh, go your way and sell whatever you are and give to the poor. That's probably all he heard, you know, and that's probably what you and I will hear. And God is speaking something to you now. And you're not listening quite quite well. He said, go sell it. Go sell it and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. In other words, by doing that, you will have something in heaven. Jesus is saying to you, look, you know, uh, all of what you consider wealth and treasure here, you're not going to take it with you. But there is a way, there is a way. Actually, you can transfer this uh, to your account. I mean, is that possible? Well, this is not the first time Jesus will say something like this. Uh, many times he, has, he, said, he said it. He said it in Matthew 6 and verse 19 through 21. He says, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. And where thieves break in and, and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Whether, whether, where neither moat nor rust destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So now, uh, Jesus said, you know, there, there is the possibility of laying treasures in heaven. And we see him talking to this man directly now and telling him how he can have treasure in heaven by doing some good works that is God ordained. Not just giving here and there and giving because, you know, you need to give to charity. Uh, it, it was God prompted. It was Jesus who's commanding this. And so don't so, sometimes your gift to charity, your gift to the poor, is just a waste. 
uh, because it's not prompted by God or God's Spirit. Okay, you know, you need to know when you need to give, not just give here and there without a purpose and without a prompting. So now, so it is possible. So for the rest of us who are here, are you laying treasures in heaven? Another time, Jesus talked about the parable of the rich fool again and, and said that, it, and he ended up that parable with a, a great uh, statement and, and said that man died living all of those things. And then he says, so is he who lays up treasure for himself that is here on earth and is not rich towards God. So, so there is a way while we're still on this terrestrial plane here on this side of heaven, we can be rich towards God. How do we become rich towards God? You know, by doing just what Jesus said, by taking the opportunity uh, to, to give. Uh, not only money, but to, to give ourselves, give our time, give our talent, give our treasures, and give to others. And understand that's how God created the, the universe. You will not find anything in nature that's not given. So let's take a, a, you know, a, cl a clue from all, what we see. Everything that God has made, God has made them to give. The sun gives its light. The trees give its fruit and then give us other things. The sea gives us, you know, seafood. Uh, you know, everything, the, 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 the flowers give us the, the, the fragrance. Everything alive gives. So in other words, my friends, if you are not giving, then you are not living. Uh, it is the way it is. It is the way the whole universe is suspended because the universe and nature is cr was created by a gracious God, a God who gives, a God who never stopped giving. And so he made everything to give. Only man complicates this uh, whole idea. We are the only one who withhold and and do not know or learn how to give. Indeed, as scripture says, the apostle Paul was the one who said these. He said, as the Lord said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, go sell. Uh, you know, I want to go back to Jesus' invitation to these men and, and bring out some words there. Something that should ring uh, in our own ears and something that should have rung in the ears of this man and understand that Jesus is not saying you're going to lose. The only thing is that, yeah, you will not see those things, you are not here anymore, but you may have transferred them uh, to heaven. Yeah, we hear and we say, and it's true to some extent that, yeah, you're not going to take it with you. Yeah, you don't have to take it, but you can transfer it, just like Jesus is saying to this man. So now, how do we lay treasures in heaven? How do we become rich towards God? You know, uh, there are many scriptures, uh, many of them are found that I want to uh, share with you now in Proverbs. See, in Proverbs 19, verse 17, it says, He who has pity uh, on the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will pay back what he has given. It's in other words, anyone who gives uh, to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will give back. You know, Proverbs 22 verse 9, uh, the Amplified Version says, He who is generous will be blessed, for he gives some of his food to the poor. Proverbs 28, 27 says, he who gives to the poor will not lack. Listen, he who gives to the poor will not lack. You know, God has made it so that those of us who have can help those who do not have. So that they don't lack and God's blessing to us is that we will not lack. But he who hides his eyes will have many causes. 
Uh, he who hides his eyes will have many causes. So my friend, these are the way we lay treasures in heaven because God noticed these. Now, I want you to pay attention to another one. Uh, this is very important uh, to really encourage us to uh, reach out uh, and, and be a blessing to someone who is in need. He who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker. But he who honors him has mercy on the needy. He who oppresses the poor reproaches maker. You know, uh, when we um, uh, take care of the poor, God make uh, notice of it. When we neglect, you know, and turn our eyes, God also notes that. So now, if 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 the Bible says when we give to the poor, it amounts to lending to the Lord, and the Lord will repay back. That means God is conscious of our activities, whether you know we you know reach out, and so those things are the things God take note and uh, definitely you know blesses with. Uh, last uh, last time. Uh, two weeks ago, I talked to you about the blessings of the ministry of mercy. Uh, the blessing of the ministry of mercy. In other words, uh, in laying up treasures in heaven as we take care of those who are less fortunate, you know, God take notes. And this result into not only uh, physical blessings, Blessings here and now, but much more blessings here after because God notices and he says this is the way to become rich towards God. Yeah, if, 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 if you lend to the Lord, you are rich towards God because God will pay you back. And so last, last is, is good to read Psalm 41 and there are sevenfold blessings uh, of the ministry of mercy. The ministry of caring for those who are less fortunate. Let me just read it to you. And uh, there are seven, seven uh, blessings there. Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. All because he considers the poor. It's a good, good place for you to read when you have the time. Just read Psalm 41, and you can see the sevenfold blessings of the ministry of mercy. Uh, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Victory. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sickbed. Healing. You know, not only there is blessing, deliverance, preservation, there is healing for the man who consider the poor. And uh, so that, 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 that is that right there. Now, um, let, let's go on. Let's ask some questions uh, that will help us. You know, uh, I have tried to establish to you that sometimes uh, most uh, teaching about this rich young girl, you know, unfortunately emphasized on the fact that he was rich. But uh, that's not the only problem. Uh, the, it's not too bad. It's, being rich, it's not a problem if he's found in the way of righteousness. And you will have, you know, uh, thought that as this man, he had money, he had morality. What a great combination. But then, what happened then? It is what money can do to you. That is what we all need to uh, watch for. I know some, some of you are working hard now to be rich, and there is nothing wrong in that. But let me just say to you, you need to prepare for those days when you're rich. There must be safeguards for those days of prosperity because those are actually dangerous days. You don't really know how much you, uh, you, you know, 
uh, how, how good you have it now when you're still not wealthy. These are your better, better days, actually. But when, when, that, when you become wealthy, uh, they may be dangerous days. They, they may be actually hard, hard days. But if you prepare for it, it's manageable that riches will not turn your heart away and not make turn you into uh, someone totally different. Uh, sometimes people get wealthy and they become, you know, uh, really bad people. So, uh, what does the Bible say about about being rich? You know, uh, it taught John verse two says, "Beloved, I pray that you may prosper." And all things that be in, he in health, just as your soul prospers. You know, uh, the, yeah, I, I did mention to you that this verse, uh, the prosperity preachers have overused this verse. While the anti prosperity preachers have undervalued this verse. Uh, if, you, if you pay attention to this verse, there is no other way to understand this verse other than that God wants you to be prosperous as your soul prosper. There is, there's no begging the truth. Yeah, God wants you well. And there's no, no, there's no other way we can say it. But notice, actually, in this verse, you cannot find the word rich or riches. So for those who are, you know, uh, you, know uh, you know, have overused uh, this verse, you will not find the word uh, rich or riches, but you will find the word health. Health is the first element of divine prosperity. True wealth is not at all money, but those things that money cannot buy. God talks about health. We talk about wealth. And the question is, would you rather be wealthy than healthy? God wants you to have health, love, peace, of mind as well as material possessions. Look, in 1 Timothy 6 verse 17, you need to know this verse. Um, you know, uh, what the Bible say about being rich. So the Bible says, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not, not trusting on certain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy let them do good, let, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible caution those who are rich not to be proud or trust. In, that is the problem with riches. That is the problem between if you can, If you can manage these two problems, then you're okay. Because right in that verse... He did say it is God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. But, you know, riches come with its own temptations and problems. And so this is why for those who want to be rich, you need to prepare for those days when you're rich. There must be safeguards, safeguards against being proud. So, you know, the, the correct prayer, the true prayer, you know, a noble prayer will be, for those of you praying for wealth, say, Lord, don't give me wealth without a measure of humility. If you're going to give me wealth, Lord, you know, add, you know, humility to it. Add, you know, increase devotion so that when I have wealth, I am not proud. When I have wealth, I am not trusting in it, but trusting in the living God. What does the Bible say about rich? I want us to just see this man, you know, and, and see what could have been the problem, why his story ended up this way. Uh, was, it, was it because he was rich? Was it because he was young? Was it because he, he was a ruler? What was the problem since he said to the Lord, Oh, I have, I have kept the commandments. I have done this. Then, then why is it that this little thing that Jesus said to do, uh, he failed. Let's, let's, let's see what the Bible say about uh, being rich. First of all, notice that uh, Abraham was rich. Abraham was the friend of God. And uh, not only was Abraham, 
we read that uh, it was God who gave him those riches. You know, Abraham's heart, you know, uh, God had God, God had his heart. In other words, if God can have your heart, then you can have whatever your heart desires. There are some men that riches will not will not displace their devotion to God. There are some men God does not have to worry about if he gave them riches. But unfortunately for most of us, God have to worry about us if, he, if we should come to sudden wealth. You know, um, Abraham's servant was saying this in uh, Genesis 26 and verse 12. He was saying, the Lord had blessed my master greatly and he has become uh, a great. Uh, he, he has given, that is, God has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, and, and male and female servant, caramels and donkeys. Now, that's a lot of stock, you know. So, the, the servant was attesting to God's blessing in his master's life, that is, Abraham. So, it is God who gives us richly all things uh, to enjoy. What was the problem of this man? Was it because he was rich or because he was young or because he was an influential person? You know, uh, now let's talk about yeah, what those categories in the life of this man could all have added to the sum of the whole problem. It, it, this, this different category is the sum of this man's problem again uh, what was his heart look you know apparently he had followed the law let's give that to him because that was his testimony and Jesus did not say he was not right so let's give that to him he had followed the law so what went wrong now uh, Jesus now saying okay come follow me see it there's a big difference between following the law and follow Jesus. Uh, to follow Jesus includes take up your cross and follow. It was easy for him to follow the law. It was easy for him to have a religion that he pride himself and pat himself on the back. I've done this, I've done this. A lot of, you know, check boxes. But when he faced Jesus and Jesus said, well, you come follow me. Free yourself free yourself and follow me there's just some things that will hold you back from following jesus uh, yours my friend may not be money for this rich young ruler it was his money and uh, how 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 sad it was that his, his his story ended with this statement and he went away sorrowful because he had great possession and and i'm i'm saying to you tonight it's not just about him having great possession but the possession had him the possession had gotten him he has been tricked by the god uh, called mammon you know uh, you know how long do you play with a rattlesnake before you get bitten it doesn't take long. Money is not something you can handle if you do not have the Spirit of God and understand uh, that money is also a spirit. Money is spiritual. Money, money is, is mammon. So in that same statement, when Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon, he contrasts God and mammon. So mammon has to be another God. So it's not something you can handle. You cannot handle it. He will try to handle you unless you have a power uh, to handle, handle it. Money is a wonderful slave, but a terrible master. So we see in the story of this man that he didn't just have possessions. But his possession has taken hold of him. It is this hold that so strong that he he, he could not, you know, uh, follow Jesus uh, as he would desire. So, my friends, the danger of being 
uh, uh, there is a danger. You know, the man was young, yeah. You know, uh, there is a danger of being young, my friend. You know, that this danger is noted uh, as the scripture tells us in Second Timothy and uh, chapter 2 and verse 22. It, it speaks to the youth. It says, flee from youthful passion, uh, lost, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and flee. Flee, youthful lost. Passion, you know, when you're young, you, there, there is passion. There is, there is passion. So there, there is a, what is it about, about being young? The Bible has so much to say for the young, young, young people. And for this young man, you know, uh, we, we see how his story ends. So if we learn some of these things, it will help us, uh, it will help our youth, you know. First of all, the Bible wants you to, as a youth, it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. That is the charge to, to, to the young. That is the charge to the young. You know, uh, if, if, if a young man will, you know, follow the word of God and, uh, you know, he, he, he will order his steps right and then secure a glorious future. Yes, uh, about being young, you know, you know, remember it was while David was young that he, you know, faced the Goliath and the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. It was why Mary, Mary was young that the angel visited him and gave her, you know, a charge, you know, to be the mother of uh, the, the Savior. You know, Jeremiah was young when uh, the, the, the word of the Lord came to, to Jeremiah saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. He had this encounter and this with the Lord. And God is saying, I, I called you while you're young. Then said, I said, Lord God, but I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I said you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. You know, and then, you know, not only was he rich, he was young, he was a ruler, meaning the man was powerful, uh, he was influential. The young man was part of the ruling class, in the time of Jesus, the primary purpose of leadership is influence. A leader should use his influence for the good of everyone, for spreading the good news and planting seeds of greatness, inspiring others to succeed. So, so he, was, he was rich, he was young, and he was influential, he was powerful. But... There was the problem with the rich young rulers. This, this man, there was a problem with, with him. The dangers that attend each of the status in his life. And so, like I have said to you, there must be safeguards for the rich, the young, and the powerful. It, 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 you know, I, I pray that, you know, you become rich. Uh, I pray that our young people become influential. But more so, I pray that you would develop that which you need uh, for those days when you are in those positions. And for those of you who are, uh, are, are young now. But what are the dangers that attend being rich? You know, because as we read on here, uh, the, the, the summation and what Jesus observed uh, when the man turned back and he was so sorrowful, it was very obvious that everybody noted that this man was very, very unhappy when he heard Jesus' word to 
go and sell his stuff. Um, and Jesus made this statement. Uh, Jesus looked at him and, and said, how difficult it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. Did you hear that? The disciples heard it too. I'm not sure they fully understood it. Uh, Jesus did not say how impossible. Jesus just, just say how difficult. Some things may be difficult and not impossible. So Jesus said how difficult it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. And they did not understand it. So Jesus had to say it in, in, in a more uh, simpler, simplified way to help them understand what he, he meant by what he said. And so this time Jesus said, how difficult is for those who trust in their riches to enter. There are dangers, uh, the danger of wealth, uh, the hindrance of, of wealth. You know, that is one of those things that Zacchaeus had to overcome. Zacchaeus had many, many things to overcome before he could, you know, get to see Jesus. The, the, he had to overcome the hindrance of, of uh, an ill repute, uh, you know, career. You know, he had to overcome the hindrance of wealth. He had to overcome the, the natural hindrance, the fact that, you know, he, the crowd prevented him natural, uh, you know, a circumstantial, you know, problem. And then his natural problem, that he was a short man. Are you, are you following me? Uh, so the, the danger of being rich, uh, for the rich young ruler, there were dangers that attend each of the status in his life. The, the fact that he was rich, he was young, and he was influential. All those things can now become an, a hindrance to spiritual life. Look, the danger of being rich. Jesus also said, no servant can serve. Notice the word serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. See, you see where that is a problem. It's not a possibility. There are so many who still think that is a possibility. You, you cannot. Jesus said, if Jesus said you cannot, you cannot. It's not possible. There is no way you can make it work. So it, it, it amounts to serving. You know, another scripture says that don't you know uh, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? If you choose to obey God, you become subject to God. If you choose to obey mammon, you become mammon. And whosoever controls you, you know, what, whatever you submit yourself controls you. This is the problem. This is the problem. If you are not submitted to God, you cannot control money. Let me say that to you again. This is the truth. If you are not submitted to God, submitted to His Spirit, you cannot control money. Money will control you. And so if money controls you, definitely it will make you do things either to yourself, to, to others, that is contrary to God's will. Okay? Now, the danger of being rich, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, uh, for where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. That is the danger. As we see now in this story before us, you know, even though the man uh, admired Jesus, the man wanted to be seen in his company. He, he came running. I mean, you know, put some effort in it. He nailed down. He was respectful. He, he was able to confidently say to the Lord, Lord, I have been doing this from, from my youth. I kept, I kept the Lord from my youth. Yeah, I, I'm fortunate. I'm rich and I'm influential. But, you know, all of that was good. And he, he, he had it. He, he had money. He had morality. He, he had respect. And all he needed was just these two, and he, he could have had it all, my friends. 
he, he could have had it all. So, uh, my friends, Jesus simply said, it, it is a simple truth. And it's, it's, it's not, there's no other way around it. Where, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Jesus gave this man the opportunity to trade his earthly treasure, give them up for him. Now follow me. So, so now it, it, was, it, was, it was difficult for him to do. Um, in 1 Timothy and verse chapter 6, verse 10, uh, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. For the love of money. Now, uh, listen very carefully. The love of, when there is a love of something, it becomes an obsession. Uh, the love for something can be okay, healthy. Now, there is no one out there, uh, in, there's no one that, that do not have love for money. The love for money is okay. The love for money is healthy. We need money to live our lives. But here it's talking about obsession, the love of. In other words, when you obsess, you will do anything and and just anything to, to get money. That becomes an obsession. You will compromise your virtues. You will compromise anything when it becomes an obsession. And then notice what it says. The love of money is a root, is the root of all kinds of evil. In other words, wherever you see evil, you is traceable back to somebody wanting money by all means. We call it greed. You know, whenever you see something bad has happened, people have been oppressed or cheated or, uh, or you know, uh, you know, it's because somebody else was, was greedy. So, so this is the danger of being rich. And, and so for the rest of us who want to be rich, we're dealing now with a rich young ruler who uh, turned down a, an invitation of a lifetime. He turned down a great opportunity to be Jesus' disciple. He turned down the opportunity to have treasure in heaven and be rich towards, towards God. This is, this is the danger of being rich. Now, he was not only was he rich, but he was young. What is the danger of being young? Well, you know, uh, youth is a time of life. It's a season, and youthfulness is characterized by vigor, passion, exuberance. The time of youth is the most significant time of, of your life. If the devil can steal your time in your youth, then he has stolen a vital part of your life. He has shortened your lifetime. If you have an hour, for example, if you have an hour to accomplish a task, and you fool around for 20 minutes, 20 minutes, the task is still the same, but only have shortened the time to finish the task. And if, if the devil can waste your time in your youth, then he has stolen a part of your life. Now, how, how does he steal your time? Now, we're talking about the danger of being young. Uh, in our story of the rich young ruler, you know, we talk about the, the problem that attends, you know, that status of being rich. We're now talking about the problem that attends the status of being young. How does he steal your time in your youth? By spending your time in the slave market of the world self-serving and indulgences. So that's why in a Timothy, the young man was told in Second Timothy, verse two and verse twenty-two, flee youthful passion. Flee youthful passion. You know, run away from those things, but instead pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the name of the Lord from a pure heart. How does he steal 
your time by living some of your days in rebellion, young people. You know, in Colossians 3.20, it says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Exodus 20, verse 12, that's one of the commandments, the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. How does the enemy steal your youth or steal your time? By keeping wrong company. Bad company corrupts good character. That's what he says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 12 says, Let no one despise your youth, but you be an example. Isn't that a, a great challenge that a young man is called to be an example, to live an exemplary life? How does he steal your time by pursuing vanities? You know, uh, wisdom from the wise old king about maximizing your youthfulness. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, it said, He was saying, you know, uh, telling us, Whatever my eyes desire, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my reward from all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on, on the labor which I had toiled. And indeed, it was all it was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. This is what he said. He's telling us his own story now. He said, I did whatever I wanted to do. I did this, I did this. But at the end of the day, it was all vanity. You know, he said, he also said, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. So understand that. Uh, there is certain things you can only do while you're young. And then finally, the wise old king said in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1, Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the year, you know, approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Uh, how does he steal your temper? By lack of self-control or lack of self-discipline unrestrained time on social media that is one of the way he steals your time and a time is that portion of your life youth is a time of your life so we, we're talking about a rich young ruler uh, the, the the status the danger that attend the status of being rich the danger that attends the status of being young, the danger that as, at now attend uh, the status of being powerful or influential. The Bible tells us that he was a ruler. He, he has uh, a status. He was part of the ruling class. He was at the top of his career. All of these working, was working together for him. Things others could only dream of the man's got it. He's, 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 he's got it. But then, but then now we, whatever challenge, this invitation that Jesus gave him exposed really his heart. Here is a man who came running, kneeling and said, oh, what do I still lack? Like? What is left for me? Now Jesus told him. And now we, we saw that all of those things that, that seemed to look at first, as this man was very near the kingdom, now we see the danger that attends the status of being influential, powerful, or being a ruler. But Jesus said, uh, if anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desire to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit it is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange 
for his soul. So what, what will he profit of man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Being influential, being in that position of power, the main purpose of leadership is influence. To influence others for good. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we carry nothing out. Having food and clothing, all with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. So, my friend, as we close tonight, I wanted to mention and round up that this young man issue is not just about money. It's more about a way of life. It's more about the challenge of now belonging to God. He had followed religion, but now he's called to follow Jesus. And that's a big challenge. And many of you may have followed religion. And that is why, you know, sometimes it's very, very, very hard for people to follow Jesus. They will tell you, no, no, I am, I am, I am Methodist, I am Catholic, I am this, I am that. But are you in Christ? And that is what we see with this story. May the Lord continue his blessing upon us. And uh, I want to wish each and every one of you uh, a happy new year. And uh, may the Lord bring us safely to the new year. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Shall we pray together? Precious Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity around uh, your feet to learn from your word. Thank you for the example before us and thank you for what you've spoken to each and every of our hearts. Help us, Lord, to apply this in our lives so that our walk with you will improve, our devotion will increase. And Lord, help us uh, with the dangers that attend being uh, in a reach, uh, being young, and being influential. There is nothing wrong with being rich, nothing wrong with, with being young and being influential. Help us to use this for the glory of your name, and the blessing of your people. We do thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us, for bringing us to the close of this year and uh, getting us ready for a new year ahead of us. We thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' precious name, amen. My friend, if you're out there and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why don't you ask him tonight and ask him to come in your heart just say this prayer with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you tonight. I come in the name of Jesus. I am sorry for my sins. I ask for forgiveness. Tonight, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, I give my heart to you. Please come into my heart and in my life. Write my name in the book of life. I commit my future into your hands. And I thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, thank you for tuning in, all of you. And uh, hope to see some of you uh, before the new year runs out. And I pray that this coming year will be better than the year that we have had. And there is hope in our future. This is what the Lord says. Have a good night and until next time, uh, press on, pray up, stay well, and look up.